Hello, everyone. Dr. Jack Wolfson, cardiologist of Natural Heart Doctor. Welcome to another episode of the Healthy Heart Show, where our goal is to bring some of the best uh, people in the world, the most knowledgeable people in the world, the most passionate people in the world, the most like-minded people in the world uh, to, to give us great information about health and wellness. And this is a woman who we met several years ago. I think I'll let her tell the story about how we met because that's very entertaining. But I've got Catherine Arnston on today of Energy Bits. She's the founder and CEO of Energy Bits, and she has an MBA uh, and is working on her PhD as well because she loves this topic about the algae-based nutrition. She's also a board-certified health coach, and she's been all over the place. She's been on all the major media platforms. She's been on Fox News, and she's been featured by Dave Asprey. But one of the things I see on your bio here, Catherine, and I've seen you at several events and we just totally connect every time we see each other. You've been so many great places, but tell me about your experience on Shark Tank. I, I knew that was coming. <laughs> I don't talk about it much anymore. It was uh, filmed almost six years ago, although they've uh, played my segment, uh, gosh, 75 times. Um, I just kept, because I'm always out talking to people about the algae nutrition and how uh, it's so powerful in terms of uh, protecting your health and helping you correct it. So many people kept saying, you should be on Shark Tank. And I, I don't seek the spotlight. So I had never wanted to go there. But I thought, well, if it, it helps me get my message out, okay. And I didn't know anybody. I didn't do anything fancy. I just applied online. And honestly, it's almost a full-time job trying to get on there. They say it's harder to get on Shark Tank now than it is to get into the Harvard uh, Business School. Um, anyways, I did get selected. Uh, it was a, quite a process. Um, the, sh the, the sharks don't know anything about you until the moment you step out in front of them. Uh, they made fun of me. They said no one was ever going to use this. I knew they wouldn't invest. Um, because, you know, they're looking for stuff they can take tomorrow to QVC or, or Costco. And we're a physician grade product and it's very much a health nutrition driven product. And it takes a little bit of education. I, I tell people, I call algae intelligent food because you have to be intelligent to take it and it knows what to do in your body. But anyways, it was still a great experience. They laughed at me. Um, they said no one would ever use it which I'm going to probably have the last laugh because we've been doubling sales uh, every year for the last three years and we don't do any advertising. It's all through word of mouth and physicians like yourself who use the product, know that it works. Uh, we do third party lab tests. So um, it was still okay, a great okay, experience. Well, uh, all right, well, and, and I do, I've got my bag here right now and, and my favorite really is, and I, I got this kind of screen background here so you, you can see I'm kind of holding it, but whatever. So this is the the energy uh, bits. These are the vitality bits yes. of what they and are. Yes, and here are the other. And uh, thank you. You're the showing the beautiful cans and there's many different, you got like small packages, bigger packages. I've got spirulina, uh, chlorella. But why don't we start from this uh, uh what is algae, right? <laughs> what, what what is algae? What is <laughs> well, uh, you know, a lot of people, if they think of algae at all, they think about the pond scum in the in their in their aquarium or that it closes their beach. And and uh, honestly, um, if I don't do my job right, you uh, well, my job here is to tell you that it's the most nutritional rock star in the world. And yes, algae does close your beach, but it's only because it kills bacteria. You know, the reason why algae shows up on your beach is because somebody somewhere dumped toxins or uh, some kind of runoff into the algae, but you can't into the water, but you can't see that. Algae kills bacteria and it will absorb the toxins. So you definitely don't wanna get near the algae uh, because it's full of toxins, but it's the cleanup crew. And it does that in nature and it also does that in your body. So first of all, um, algae is everywhere. There's two main types of algae. One is called macroalgae and the other one is microalgae. We're gonna talk about microalgae today, but let me tell you what macroalgae is. It's that stringy stuff that you see washing up on shore, also known as seaweed. Now, it's only in the sea, which is why it's called seaweed, and it's loaded with fiber and iodine because it's from the ocean, but it has virtually zero nutrition. Uh, but it's still good for you because of the fiber and the iodine. Uh, the other type of algae is called microalgae, and it's completely opposite to seaweed. First of all, it's everywhere. It's not just in the sea. It's in the rivers, the lakes, the streams, your aquarium, your swimming pool, but also in the soil. And um, it is the most concentrated food in the world because 
something like a million microalgae could fit on the head of a pin. And as you're going to find out today, we sell our algae in little tiny tablets that are about the size of a baby aspirin. So when you concentrate all that nutrition, and we have a quote from NASA that says one gram of microalgae has the same nutrition as a thousand grams of fruits or vegetables. So when you concentrate that, you start to see why it is so nutrient dense. So completely opposite to macroalgae, very nutrient dense. And also it has virtually no fiber. And in fact, spirulina has zero fiber because it's actually a bacteria. Spirulina is a blue green algae. It's a little darker and chlorella is a green algae. So number one, algae is everywhere. There's two main types, macro and micro. Microalgae is the most nutrient dense food in the world. It's also endorsed by the United Nations as the answer to world hunger because it has the highest concentration of protein in the world, has three times the amount of protein as steak. Now the algae that we sell, even though algae is in all the water wild water bodies, that's not what we sell. Our algae and probably anything that you buy from Whole Foods is grown this way. It's grown hydroponically in fresh water. Yes, there is algae in the ocean, but the algae that you buy at Target or Costco or from us is usually grown in fresh water. What makes us different is that our water is triple filtered. So it's very, very clean. This is a spirulina farm. Spirulina grows long and narrow. This is a chlorella farm. So you need to know that algae, as I said, is everywhere and it's food. It is not a supplement. And what makes us special is that not only do we grow the algae in triple filtered spring mountain water, our, the next stage is to dry it into a powder. But what makes us special is that we do not use high heat to dry the algae. Uh, before we put it into little tablets that we call bits because they're bits of nutrition. And so why is that important that we don't use high heat? Because high heat kills enzymes and it also uh, deactivates important um, uh, pigments. And so there are all the less expensive algae companies need to sell more. So they need to get to market quickly. So they use high heat and that kills very important antioxidants, including one we're going to talk about today extensively called superoxide dismutase, which I know is a mouthful, so it's also known as SOD. But SOD okay, is well, proven hold, to- hold on, hold on, hold on. So before we get to SOD, I just want to say that uh, I love the products uh, going forward, really, that are food-based. And I love yes. the fact that this is food. And and listen, everyone's heard the you know, uh, uh, cliche or the, you know, the saying, you know, food is medicine and that definitely is true. And before we get into all the health benefits, go ahead and maybe share the story about how you and I first met and really the delicious nature of the, the energy bits. Yeah. Well, it is kind of funny. So I think it was, gosh, five or six years ago, maybe even longer. Uh, I was exhibiting at a lot of the uh, chiropractic conferences. We now do a lot of the biohacking. And anyways, chiropractic was our number one first community that embraced us and, and me. And so uh, I had my little table. Uh, I think it was in uh, um, in Oregon. And uh, you were there with your wife and your children. And you had this, your adorable daughter, uh, her, what was her name? I think she's about. Uh, yeah, Journey, Journey. Yeah, uh, She's about to turn six, yeah. Oh my God. Well, I think she was like 16 months at the time. So, yeah. you know, adorable little girl. And I had my, my spirulina and chlorella on my table and she came running up, grabbed a big handful of chlorella, popped it in her mouth, chewed it all down, walked away for a couple of seconds, came back, grabbed another handful, she must have had in the space of five minutes about a hundred of these tablets. Her, it made me so happy because her mouth was had the little green on the corners of her. She probably would have just sat, stood there and eaten it all day long. But it, it was so. Um, and we took pictures of me and her and me and your wife, and uh, because it was it was so charming. We even did little videos to see this little child. Uh, enjoying something that has been a gift to us from Mother Nature, but has never been explained very well to people or grown it very carefully. We grow ours so carefully that it does taste delicious. At least I think it does. I put sea salt on mine or I eat it with pistachio nuts. But um, just the fact that a 14 or 16 month old child would be so drawn to eating this because, uh, and once you start taking it, you will crave it because it intuitively, your body intuitively knows how good it is for, for it. And there are some powerful nutrients, particularly related to heart health, that aren't found in any other food 
anywhere and in and in most cases not even other algae but um well, me, so yeah me, it was it was a lot so, of fun <laughs> yeah well i want to uh yeah i also want to use this opportunity to tell people that you know if you if you or someone you love is used to eating uh fast food uh artificial foods high sugary foods you may not necessarily uh, like the taste. In the case of children, I think outright, you know, you can take 98% uh, of children and they will spit these things out. But uh, if you if you feed them correctly, so in the case of Journey, right, she was breastfed uh, and then she starts eating foods like grass-fed liver and she's eating uh, clams and oysters uh, and she's eating salads. So naturally, she's just going to love the taste of one of nature's perfect foods of which you're describing and back to that again i'm i take you know when i travel and i travel with i do travel with freeze-dried liver and i travel with some of our freeze-dried you know capsule you know products of real food and i travel you know with the energy bits the vitality bits with your products because i know they're best at, you know in in brand uh, and i also what i like too catherine is that i love the crunch i love that crunchy feel yeah, uh, of of something because sometimes in the animal world, like you don't get much, you know, in the animal in, in the paleo world, there's not much crunch. So I love that aspect of it. Yeah, or carnivores. And by the way, um, the both the algae, spirulina and chlorella, and we'll talk about the difference between the two of them. They're per perfect for paleo <clears throat> and carnivores. First of all, you can't get any more ancestral than algae. It was the first life on Earth almost four billion years ago. Nothing predates algae. Before algae, earth was just gas and water, nothing lived, no oxygen. So very paleo, very ancestral. Number two, it's great for carnivores. One of the reasons people go carnivore, from what I understand, is they have uh, stomach issues because um, there's lectins and oxalates in a lot of plants that can uh, puncture your stomach lining. Well, the reason why plants have lectins and oxalates is to protect themselves from predators like bugs and animals. Well, algae originated in the ocean, so it never had to develop lectins or oxalates. So there are no lectins or oxalates in, in algae. So that's why Dr. Gundry likes our products so much um, because we help people understand that. So if you're paleo, okay. carnivore, vegan, low carb, low cal, low fiber, uh, this is the food for you, and it's absolutely effortless. Uh, you know, to your point, most people do swallow the spirulina because it's a very acquired taste. It's very chewy because it has 64% protein. It's loaded with essential fatty acids. Uh, so a lot of people don't like the fact that it sticks their teeth and it's very earthy flavor. The chlorella is a bit more palatable. It's more like a sunflower seed, doesn't stick to your teeth, has less protein and essential fatty acids. So it's the one that most people do enjoy if they like either one of them uh, eating. And if you can I like- do, I, do, I do like that combo product. I mean, I think all your stuff obviously is fantastic and everything is certainly worth a try and see what resonates you know, with the individual. Yeah. And we'll talk about the kind of the benefits of maybe each one individually and why I personally like the combo. But, um, you know, carnivores, there, there was no such thing in human history or on, all animals eat plants as well. In one way, lions, tigers, not everybody is a total obligate uh, a vegan and certainly not obligate carnivore. Uh, there's tons of mix uh, in all of that. And another popular diet going around these days is the low histamine diet. Can you comment about uh, uh, algae and, and histamine production? Yeah, well, it reduces uh, the histamines. I actually don't have a lot of research on that, but we have people who have been able to get off their um, allergy medication uh, by using this because it re reduces the, the histamines. Uh, we have people who get off their um, depression medication. We have got people getting off their diabetes medication. The things that this the algae does for you is almost unbelievable. In fact, I came up with say, a saying that said the benefits are, are um, too powerful to believe and too, too simple to believe and too powerful not to. And fortunately, I have science NIH articles, PubMed articles that validate absolutely everything that I ever say about algae. So I don't make anything up. It's all validated in science. So um, so it's it's really, other than breast milk, um, algae, spirulina in particular is, the, is number two perfect, perfect food. And, and in fact, the nutrient profile of spirulina is almost identical to mother's breast milk. Same aminos in the same proportions and very high in GLA, which is gamma linoleic acid. Um, which is in the mother's breast milk because it helps the body, baby's brain develop. And 
after the age of two, you can't get breast milk. So uh, this is like Mother Nature's version of breast milk for you. <laughs> Which is, yeah, why, why Journey liked it so much. And I, and I guess I would say, listen, obviously, I know you're not saying, you know, this instead of breast milk, but you're no, 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 is- no. But your product is cleaner than breast milk, that's for sure. Most breast milk, unfortunately, contains so many poisons and contaminants because that's what the mother is exposed to. Yeah. But I think uh, I think you're generating a cleaner product. But I love the idea of, I mean, listen, people ask all the time about, you know, uh, babies' first foods and babies don't need any food until, you know, I think really, you know, you think about paleolithically how they would start getting their, their first food. It would just be kind of like gnawing on scraps or whatever was kind of whatever babies can can get their hands on they're not doing like applesauce or smushed carrots or any kind of peas or crap you know like that it was all just whatever was around in the hunter gatherer lifestyle but i think this is a great uh, great opportunity yeah and a delicious one Um, and because it's so oh sorry go ahead I was going to say, it's, I mean, it's just so wonderful for travel. When I travel, I know it's so nutrient dense and so detoxifying cleansing. I love it for travel. Yeah, the um, we have the little pouches that have 30 tablets in them. So whether you're on a plane or stuck in a car, it just you know gives you what you need. It's so nourishing so that um, I mean, literally you could have 30 for lunch and you wouldn't be hungry for five hours. And we use the, um, oops, yeah, we use the same quote from NASA that determined that one of the tablets, which is the size of a baby aspirin, has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables. That's almost a pound of vegetables. Um, but, you know, a lot of people, as they get older, can't digest vegetables they uh they, the the fiber gives them gas or uh men and children are notorious for not eating vegetables and vegetables go uh bad very quickly um uh, they aren't the nutrients in vegetables are not what you your grandparents had their scientists are calling this the great nutrient collapse because the soils are so overcropped there's no minerals left in them and then the ozone layer is deteriorated so they're finding that plants have more sugar and less chlorophyll and less um, nutrients. So it doesn't matter even if you ate a lot of vegetables, you just wouldn't get the same nutrition as you would get from uh, chlorella. And besides, all you have to do is swallow a handful and you're done like in seconds. And that's why I, you know, I love this because I used to try for a year when I was teaching plant-based nutrition to get people to eat more vegetables, but it was just too much work. They were heavy to carry home from the grocery store. They didn't like them or they went bad quickly and arguments at the dinner table. Problem solved. If you don't like vegetables, problem solved. You don't have time for vegetables, problem solved. Uh, Just make sure you take, you know, we recommend at least 10 spirulina in the morning for nourishment and 10 chlorella before bed because chlorella pulls out toxins and helps you with your repair um, cycle. And you do that when you're sleeping. So um, there's so much nutrition. We sell them in large bags of a thousand tablets that each bag has the same nutrition has 551 pounds of vegetables. So if you took 10 tablets a day, that that bag would last you three months. You know, you could take more if you wanted, but it works out because uh, we have a 20% discount code for your audience, NHDOC. Um, it works out to a dollar a day. And as you're going to find out, spirulina, which we'll talk about next, and chlorella have all the nutrients that your heart needs, that your immune system needs, that your stem cells need. And so why would you deny yourself the opportunity of optimal health or regaining your health if it only costs you a dollar a day. I mean, Starbucks coffee is probably $5 now and it won't do anything for your health. But this literally, 100,000 studies is a big number. And you can't deny 100,000 studies documenting all of the health benefits of spirulina and chlorella. So for a dollar a day, man, you're cheating yourself if you don't use it. In fact, I, I uh, I call this now your nutritional trust fund, because I, who who would ever turn down a trust fund, right? A trust fund means you've got money to do whatever you want, whenever you want. Well, this gives you whatever the nutrients you need so you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. This is your nutritional trust fund, as long as it comes from a clean source and with all the nutrients preserved. Mother Nature or God or the universe created algae, but I will take credit for the fact that we grow it carefully dry it to preserve the nutrients. And then we do third party lab tests here in the United States. So you can be sure that you're getting what we tell you you're getting and no toxins. There's no, there's no doubt your company is best in, in again, in the, in the entire space and what you do and the integrity. And obviously I only interview high integrity people and you and I have known each other for years. So that's why I finally have you on. I'm so excited (laughs) about this, but uh, uh, give me uh, reverse back to 2008. What got you so passionate about this topic? 
Yeah, well, I'm I'm Canadian by birth, and all my family's still in Canada. And and uh, I was doing international economic development, nothing to do with nutrition. And uh, back in 2000, uh, yeah, 2008, my younger sister, who I'm very close to, who lives in Canada, developed breast cancer. Now, um, her as she was preparing for her chemotherapy, her oncologist, which is a cancer specialist told her to change her diet to an alkaline diet because it would help with her healing. She didn't tell her what an alkaline diet was or why it was good for her. So first call my sister made was to me uh, because I love her and um, I'm a good researcher. It turned out I'm I'm actually a pretty darn good researcher, which is why I want to pursue my PhD now. So I said, I have no idea what this alkaline diet stuff is, but I will find out. And I did. You can just Google it. It was mostly a plant-based diet, actually, because of the phytonutrients and the chlorophyll that have been proven to build your immune system. And um, as I dug through the science, I also found out that uh, back in the 30s, there was a German scientist by the name of Otto Warburg, who won a Nobel Prize for discovering that cancer can only exist in cells that are slightly acidic. There's a scale of zero to 14 that measures the pH and your cells need to be 7.1, which is just slightly alkaline. And when they're slightly alkaline, that in indicates there's enough oxygen in the cell that they're communicating healthy, toxins are getting out, nutrients are getting in. When you lose the oxygen in the cell, it becomes more acidic and it becomes a, um, a, a place where cancer can start festering. So it may sense to me as I learned about this, that my sister's oncologist wanted her to have an alkaline diet to ensure that her cellular level pH at the cellular level was slightly alkaline. So it's things that make your blood uh, and your body acidic are um, sugar, processed foods, anything white, you know, meat does is does have acidity, but you can balance that out. Uh, I, by the way, emo, uh, very upset emotions, uh, anxiety. These are all cause chemical reactions in your body, which have the same effect as creating more acidity in your at the cellular level and in your blood, by the way, your blood needs to be even slightly more uh, alkaline it needs to be 7.34. And when it's not alkaline at that 7.34, uh, because maybe you've had too much sugar or too much processed food, your body intuitively pulls minerals like calcium, magnesium, potassium, which are alkaline out of your bones, out of your organs, out of your cells to neutralize that acidity. And if that happens over and over and over again, it wears down your immune system. It contributes to osteoporosis. So I think this was why she wanted her to have this alkaline diet so that that would you know, neutralize that situation from occurring. So, so I'm very grateful that she, uh, her oncologist in Canada, I don't think this would ever have come happened in America, um, gave her this kind of nutritional guidance because it, it helped her with her recovery and it set me on a whole new journey because as I was helping her, I learned so much. I gave up my 25 year corporate career and went back to school and, and uh, here I am 13 years ago. I only wanted to help my sister. And then I went to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and got a health coaching certificate. Then I taught plant-based nutrition and found out people were having too much it was too difficult for them to eat vegetables. And so that led me to algae, which comes in these little tiny tablets. You don't ever have to eat another vegetable again if you don't want to. They're ketogenic, zero carbs. They do not decrease your ketones or increase your glucose. They're fantastic for diabetics. They're fantastic for carnivores. They are effortless nutrition. If you can swallow water, you can get the nutrients that you need effortlessly. I also call it your nutritional insurance because then when you go out to eat, it's for pure pleasure, for social reasons, but your body is getting the nutrients that it needs to perform optimally at the cellular level. So uh, from a cardiovascular standpoint, again, this is the Healthy Heart Show and I'm a cardiologist. So in the Journal of Medicinal Food, it showed that uh, chlorella lowered uh, blood pressure down, spirulina improves lipid profile according to the medical journal uh, lipids in uh, uh, health and disease. When you put the combination uh, together, they found that cardiovascular risk factors were in, uh, improved, including antioxidant status. And you kind of mentioned that before about a little known uh, uh, enzyme called superoxide dismutase. Maybe maybe talk about that and why it's important and why everyone should know that uh, yeah, your products are a great source. Sure. So superoxide dismutase, I know it's a big mouthful. Uh, SOD is a short form for it. Um, it is an antioxidant. And 
what's so powerful about this particular antioxidant is that it's one of the few antioxidants that can get inside the inner membrane of your mitochondria to stop free radical damage. Now, if you don't know what mitochondria are, they're little organelles that are inside all of your cells and they generate cellular energy. Now, when we talk about cellular energy, we're not talking about energy that you need just to go to the grocery store or go for a great run. This uh, cellular energy, and it's called ATP, um, propels all of the activities in your body, your lymphatic system, your heartbeat, uh, your neurotransmitters, your digestion. You need cellular energy for everything. I say cellular energy is like money. When you have more money, you can do more things and you have more choices. When you have more cellular energy, you can do more things and you have more choices. The problem is, the cellular energy is created by something by these mitochondria um, and uh, what happens however is the mitochondria get damaged in the process of generating atp and i'm going to show you how this works so in your cell you ha uh, you have your nucleus and you have these little peanut shaped things called mitochondria just so you know you have 7000 mitochondria per cell in your heart the highest number is in your brain and the next is your heart because the highest amount of cellular energy and mitochondria are where the greatest energy needs are and that's your brain and your and your heart so inside the cell are these little mitochondria and this is where the atp is produced but a byproduct of atp are free radicals and you may not know this but your mitochondria have their own dna you have 22,000 regular DNA. They were over here in the cheap seats in the cell, in the regular cell. But your mitochondria, they only have 37 DNA, but those 37 control all 22,000 other DNA. They control cellular communication. They control everything. But they're right beside where the free radicals are being produced. Your regular DNA lasts a lifetime. Your mitochondria DNA lasts an average of 10 days. And that's because they are ringside to where all the free radicals are. And the problem is um, the mitochondria have an inner membrane. All your other cells have what's called a lipid membrane which is a fancy word for saying fat. And the mitochondria have that too, but they have this inner membrane. I'm gonna tell you where it came from later on. And this inner membrane is impenetrable to almost all antioxidants. Vitamin C can't get in there, vitamin E. You can eat a room full of blueberries, not a drop of antioxidants will get in there. It's also impenetrable by drugs. There are three antioxidants that I have researched that do get into that inner membrane. Glutathione, chlorophyll, and superoxidismutase. Superoxidismutase is the most powerful one. Why? Because superoxide is one of the free radicals that are produced in the mitochondria. And they're known to be the most damaging because they have three unpaired electrons. So they can do three times the amount of damage. Now, the good news is your body creates uh, superoxidismutase from the moment you're born, but it stops making it after about the age of 30. And there's no surprise to me that uh, most chronic disease and heart disease starts hitting people around 40 and 50. So you have all the superoxidismutase that you need until here. And 60% of Americans have a chronic, of adult Americans over, over 40 have a chronic disease. And when you hit 65, that goes up to 85%. And one of the biggest ones is heart disease. And I believe it's because after the age of 40, your body is no longer creating superoxidismutase to protect your mitochondria from free radical damage. And here's the problem. You can't get superoxidismutase from any food except spirulina and also to a lesser degree to uh, chlorella. But there's a catch. Superoxidismutase is an enzyme. And anybody who knows anything about nutrition knows that enzymes are deactivated by high heat. So when you get up to 114 degrees Fahrenheit, they, de they are de deactivated. And almost all the other algae companies that are lower priced that have to get to market quickly to sell more, they use high heat to dry their algae. And what does that do? It deactivates the superoxidismutase. So you might be getting lots of protein and chlorophyll, but you are not getting the heart protection or mitochondria protection of the mitochondria. Uh, or from the superoxidismutase. And what exactly does superoxidismutase do? Well, it turns the free radicals into harmless water. 
da da. So your your mito your mitochondria and your heart are basically saved. It's like having the firemen in there. They they hose down the free radicals and turn them into water. And there are twenty five thousand studies in the NIH library that document the healing properties of superoxidismutase to correct heart disease, to prevent inflammation, to uh, help with respiratory disease, Alzheimer's. It is the literally the uh, considered more powerful than glutathione, which is known as the master antioxidant. And the problem is you can't get it in your body after the age of 30 or 40. And other than uh, algae, if it's uh, grown correctly and not dried with high heat, it's unavailable, period. The only other place you could get it from would be frozen spirulina because it, again, has not been exposed to high heat. So I'm very proud that we offer people not only a, a nutrient-dense, clean, toxin-free uh, algae that's loaded with chlorophyll and protein and all the other goods, but we have powerful antioxidant capability that protect the mitochondria and particularly the heart uh, from the free radical damage that occurs all the time, but particularly after the age of 40. Um, you know probably way more than I do how when the frequency of heart uh, uh, attacks are in heart disease. I, I'm assuming 40 is kind of when you see the greatest number starting to, to show up. Yeah, most certainly. And it's just, it's getting younger and younger and younger in a very scary fashion. And of course, pharmaceuticals are never the answer. Let me ask you, because um, I, I learned this from you, actually, that vitamin K2 is found also in uh, in algae. So maybe talk about uh, uh, K2 in this arena as well. Obviously, I talk about it a lot. We test everybody's levels of K2. Uh, but uh, you know, tell me, tell me what you know about yeah. K2 inside of this product. Well, K2 is a very important nutrient and uh, vitamin. It was only discovered about 25 years ago, and virtually all uh, North Americans are deficit in it. What does K2 do? Well, it moves excess calcium out of soft tissue, like your heart, your brain, your skin, all your organs, and moves it into your bones. They're realizing that arterial sclerosis, which is hardening of the arteries, very often what's hardening is calcium. So you need K2 to move that calcium out of there to clear up the, uh, the, the arteries so you don't have uh, excess buildup, which could turn into either a stroke or a heart attack. Chlorella has the daily requirement of K2. Spirulina has some as well, but K chlorella has the higher amount. Um, now, let me tell you why there's a shortage of K2 in our diet. So K2 is related to K1. K1 is in any vegetable that is green. And um, animals have an extra bacteria in their stomach that allow them to convert the K1 into K2. Humans do not have that capability. So until the early 70s, when we were eating grass-fed animal protein, which is how cows used to be raised, uh, we were getting the K2 because when the cows ate the grass, they converted the K1 into K2. And when we ate the meat, we got the K2. And then in about the 70s, early 70s, the farmers realized that if they fed the uh, cattle corn and moved them into enclosures, they would make more money because the cattle would get a lot fatter, a lot faster. Overnight, the supply of K2 in our daily diet disappeared. And I think you'll find, because I think that was in the early 70s, that's when heart disease just went through the roof. And I think a large part of it was this K2. Now you can get K2 from um, supplements. They're usually made from, um, from fermented chickpeas. Um, K2 is a complicated uh, nutrient. They have M4, MK, different kinds of, uh, they're, they're given all these different names. Now I believe M4 is the only one that comes from animal protein and algae. And, and the reason why it's the important one because it's the only one that can also cross the brain barrier. For whatever reason, the fermented chickpeas, uh, I think it's have mostly M7, do not get into your brain. So if you're going to want to up your ant, your amount of K2, I would definitely go with grass-fed animal protein and uh, chlorella because that, that will give you what you need. So no, that's a great, yeah, yeah, those are great points. And, you know, I think also that uh, pregnant women have to be careful regarding some of the uh, K2 products as MK7, as you mentioned, because there's some data that looks like it causes uh, uh, calcification of the placenta, but actually Ooh. MK4 does not, 
Yeah. And I learned about that from the from the people over at uh, Walkabout Emu Oil. And Emu Oil is another fantastic source of uh, K2 as MK4. Uh, but, oh, nice. Uh, uh, but but nonetheless, I mean, I, I do think that that is a clean product, but it's just, it's definitely more processed than what you have, uh, you know, uh, you know, of course, available. So these are great, great ideas, you know, for yeah. pregnant women as well. I mean, think about just how, how how nutritious, nutrient dense. Tell me about the benefits because we talked a lot about cardiovascular health and there's some good data on all this. In addition to common sense, as you said, we've been around this particular food for, uh, you know, since the dawn of human existence and since the dawn of the planet, really. What about uh, what about brain health? Uh, tell me some of the benefits and maybe delve into the to the uh, kind of like mental health uh, space as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you're talking my. you just you're just giving me you're dr- giving me little uh, nuggets. So um before I do that, I just want to uh, help you understand the difference between the two algae because spirulina is very much a brain health, brain algae, and chlorella is very much a gut algae. And why is that? Spirulina is a blue-green algae, which is why I packaged it in blue. And um, and uh, it has it's known for being energizing um, both physically and mentally in the moment and also at the cellular level by helping generate more ATP in the mitochondria. Now, um, and the way that it gives you energy in the moment is because it has the highest concentration of protein and the protein's all in individual aminos. When you eat animal protein, they're all bound up and it can take days for your body to break down into aminos. With um, both algae, the aminos are individual, so it gets absorbed instantly. Now, spirulina is a cyanobacteria. That's important because it means there's no cellulose wall for your body to break down to get access to the aminos. It's loaded with B vitamins, which convert the aminos into glucose and energy. So that's what gives you the, um, the, the increased energy. Now, when we talk about energy, it's not a stimulant. This is different from caffeine, chemicals, or sugar. To help you understand the difference between the two of them, think of a stimulant as if you were putting paper on a fire. You get a burst of energy, which means you get a burst of insulin, but you also get a crash. And what that stimulant does is it speeds up the movement of molecules from your brain into your body. So that's why you suddenly you get perked up from the sugar or from the caffeine. Algae does not do that. Algae is like putting a log on the fire. It's very steady, slow burn. No, no rush and no crash. You wouldn't possibly even notice it uh, if you only took 10 tablets. You, what you would notice is that you just feel more alert. You feel like you've just had a good night's sleep. And if you take it before a workout, uh, you'll have a better workout. You'll have more energy. You won't even notice it, but you'll either run further or lift more without any effort. So that's why it's, I call it steady eddy. There's no drama when you have spirulina. It's very, very steady. And then I'll talk about later on how it helps with the mitochondria generation of the ATP because there's a couple of nutrients, including the blue pigment in here, which is called phycocyanin. What that phycocyanin does, well, I'll show you now. When you, in your mitochondria, I showed you the, the, that inner membrane there are molecules embedded in the, in the inner membrane that are used to generate the ATP. Now think of these molecules like uh, a relay race. You know, you've all seen a relay race and you have a runner and they have a baton and they run a certain distance. They pass the baton to the next runner. Then the run, that runner takes it and goes to the next one and hopefully they cross the finish line. Well, instead of a baton being passed, you have electrons, and instead of runners, you have these molecules that are embedded in the membrane. And so the electrons go from one molecule to the next, and at the final ending, instead of crossing the finish line, you generate ATP. Now, when the mitochondria are healthy, these molecules are close together so they can move the electrons along quickly, and there's not much leakage of the electrons which convert into free radicals. And one of the cool things is there's a couple of helper molecules. One is called cytochrome C. It's sort of like having a Tesla in there. It speeds up the movement of the um, of the electrons. So, and it's the cytochrome, it's the phycocyanin that does it. So it it moves the electrons along close faster, so you get more ATP produced. But here's the really cool thing that if the 
if the cell is either cancerous or a senescent cell, the, the phycocyanin, the blue pigment, knows to eject it and it kills the cancer cell or it kills the senescent cell. Pretty cool. But I want to go back to the, the mitochondria. So just remember that what I just showed you. So here's a healthy mitochondria. All those molecules are tightly knit together. So here, the electrons are being passed along very effectively, generating lots of ATP. This is a healthy mitochondria. Very few electrons being leaked out. Here is an unhealthy mito mitochondria. See how far apart the molecules are from one another? That makes it very difficult for them to pass the electrons. So you automatically lose a lot of the electrons and that does two things. That means there's fewer electrons to be, uh, be used to generate ATP and more of them leak out and become free radicals. So this is why when you have damaged mitochondria, it's a downward spiral. In heart disease, you get this downward spiral because more and more of the electrons are leaking out, creating free radical damage. Here's a picture of a healthy mitochondria. And here's a real picture of a damaged mitochondria. So this is where all the, those little um, molecules can't be passing the electrons, which means more electrons escape, which convert into free radicals, which cause more damage to the mitochondria, and it's a downward slide. But fortunately, as I mentioned, spirulina and to a lesser extent chlorella have the critical nutrient superoxidismutase that stops that free radical damage because it can get into the mitochondria. And the reason why this is a long way to get back to, to brain health, because your brain has the highest concentration of mitochondria. So when you have spirulina and it's creating more ATP, more cellular energy, it's create, allowing your mitochondria to function better, you're going to have better uh, mental health. And this is a great book that was published last year called Brain Energy. Dr. Chris Palmer is the author. He's a psychiatrist uh, at the uh, Harvard Medical School. I thought it was pretty funny because his book and my, my spirulina look pretty similar. Anyways, he talked about how all brain health issues are damp due to damaged mitochondria. And because spirulina has been proven to heal the mitochondria, it uh, has the nutrients in it like superoxidismutase that stop for radical damage. It, the phycocyanin has been proven to extend the telomere health. So you want to protect the telomeres because they protect your DNA. It's also loaded with essential fatty acids. So it's very much a brain health food. And in fact, we all know that people eat fatty fish, uh, like salmon, uh, 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 because of it's known as brain food and uh, has lots of omega-3 in it. And I tell people, well, where do you think the fish got the omega-3 from? They get it from algae. So you can save yourself the headache of getting fish oil, which usually is rancid by the time you get it anyways, and just go straight to the source. But this is why I have now labeled spirulina as brain food because it has so much superoxidismutase, so much uh, of the blue pigment that has been proven to uh, protect and heal your mitochondria. And I've also just recently started doing some more research that found I've, that's the research has been there, but I wasn't aware of it, that it's the phycocyanin, again, the blue pigment um, uh, also protects and increases stem cell circulation and stem cells which are made in your um, bones uh, are are the stem are the cells that can convert to any part any other cell in your body so they can repair your heart they can repair your spleen they can repair anything including your your neurotransmitters so what they've been finding is that the blue phycocyanin stimulates the release of more stem cells, which means the, when you have more circulating stem cells, that means there's more available. The stem cells only target damaged tissue. So if you have damaged tissue and you have more circulating stem cells, then you have a greater chance that that tissue will be corrected. And if there isn't any damage, the stem cells just, they go back to the, to the bone marrow and they stay there. So uh, but the trick is, remember I said about superoxidismutase is an enzyme and it's damaged by high heat? Well, phycocyanin, I have a chart somewhere, shows that it is also deactivated by high heat. So now you're missing superoxidismutase and its ability to stop um, free radical damage and potentially you know, stop heart disease. And you're missing the phycocyanin if you are not 
getting your spirulina from a source that doesn't use high heat. So, um, so those are two great, really great reasons that uh, you want good sourced spirulina without high heat and why spirulina is very much a, a brain food. Um, well, I think, I think you just proved it right there. Uh, people, if you're listening to this, which obviously you are, if you're listening to me talk right now and you're listening to uh, Catherine Arnston on this, uh, uh, hopefully soon to be Dr. D uh, Catherine Arnston as she gets her PhD at some point. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, I mean, she is a worldwide expert. You're listening to it right now. If you want the energy and the brain power of this woman, you have to be just absolutely amazed and say, whatever this woman's doing, you know, sign me up. Um, real quick, are there anyone who uh, who can't uh, you know take this? We have to worry about maybe with someone who's on pharmaceuticals, any thoughts, concerns, questions, uh, side effects, anything in that area? With spirulina, absolutely every single person in the world, zero contraindications, absolutely. Newborns can take it because remember, no fiber and the nutrient profile is virtually identical to mother's breast milk. Your pets will love this. Your children will love this. Your grandparents will love this. There's probably more nutrition in one tablet than they probably get if they're at a nursing home all week. So absolutely zero, zero contraindications. I, I want every single person in the world taking this every day. Uh, and maybe we can turn our this this spiraling situation of chronic disease, especially heart disease, out of get it back under control. Now, chlorella, which I'll I'll talk about next, um, because it's a detoxing and wellness algae. Again, this is an energizing brain health. This is a detoxing and um, gut health uh, algae, and it pulls out toxins and heavy metals, including lead, mercury, radiation, aluminum. So if you have any medications that have metals in them, like uh, uh, COVID virus uh, vaccines, um, you know, that could be a good thing. Uh, we just recommend you take it a couple of hours after, either before or after your medication, just to be sure. Uh, one of the things I will point out, though, is if you are getting um, any kind of uh, chemotherapy treatments, if you have cancer, this is a great thing to take the next day because it will pull out the excess chemotherapy uh, so that you're not as nauseous. The United Nations used chlorella after uh, the Chernobyl accident years ago to pull out excess radiation. When there was the Fukushima disaster about 10 years ago, the entire global supply of chlorella was bought up by the Asians within 24 hours. And because it's a plant, we, every, the rest of the world had to wait another six weeks to get chlorella because they had to wait for the next supply to be grown because the Asians know it pulls out radiation. So if you are getting radiation treatment, this is a godsend. I would encourage you to take the spirulina as well because it will give you energy. That one I didn't mention is that that blue pigment phycocyanin has been proven to um, to kill cancer cells. And I can- well, I, you know, But I, I like the two of them in, in combination. Is there any problem? I mean, I would assume there's not since you- no. said and I take your product, but you know, taking the two in combination, I love it. Yeah, a lot of people do like. We have a, a brand called Vitality Bits, uh, and it's a blend of the. It's a blended algae tablet, and we find that people who just want simplicity, they don't want to think about spirulina in the morning and chlorella at night. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so just take the same amount in the morning and same amount at night. You're good. You know, um, so so that that's a great way to um to make your life simpler. And by the way, when you take spirulina, because it has so much nutrition in it, it can replace a multivitamin, fish oil, collagen has more collagen in it than collagen powder, uh, probably a um, uh, biotin because it, it builds your skin and hair, your skin is, uh, and your, your skin and your hair are both uh, protein. So very, very um, nourishing and it just simplifies your life and it's food. Just remember, it's we call them bits because they're bits of food. So supplements are made are a mashup of extracts that don't exist in nature, and your body can't absorb most of them. So it, this is the think of this uh, algae as a, as a symphony, as opposed to those supplements are like individual soloists. Um, so very, I'm, I'm with you. You know, and especially as you talk about fish oil. I mean, ourselves as a company, to be candid, we still sell fish oil because. People take it and and they like the way they feel on it, which is fine. It doesn't mean you can't take, uh, uh, you know, the products that we're talking about here, the energy bits that we're talking about, because uh, you can definitely do it together. But for the most part, we are really pushing just a hey, eat seafood, eat real food. Uh, we've got some capsules that we use, which are are 
uh, the wild salmon row inside of a capsule, the whole fish, Ooh, nice. the whole sardine inside of a capsule for people who don't want to, you know, or can't really eat the whole fish or whatever, but uh, totally in agreement with everything you're saying. Uh, Catherine, it's absolutely fantastic. We got so much information. Uh, I got a feeling I could ask you questions for a while and you could talk forever on this, but yeah, uh, yeah. Here, I mean, here's the bottom line, people that um, uh, you can get pro the products from us. We do list these on our website. We do have a discount code as well that we will be sharing uh, I believe you said it's uh, NH Doc um, uh, twenty. NH Doc, uh, and you can also come to energybits.com and use NH Doc. I want to tell you one more thing about why um, both algae, but particularly spirulina, are so helpful for you. Remember, I mentioned at the very beginning that algae was the first life on Earth, and uh, it, uh, what start and before algae, it was a cyanobacteria that showed up, which was an anaerobic cell. And it generated ATP. And so after about a billion years, there was enough oxygen on Earth for other cells that were aerobic to start growing. And they were larger cells. But they didn't generate ATP as well as the little anaerobic cell. So the, uh, I can imagine the conversation between the big cell and the little cell. Big cell says to the little cell, hey, I, I see you're struggling there. How about... Uh, we protect you from the oxygen and you come and generate ATP for us. So it's basically what happened. The original cell was a cyanobacteria like spirulina. And um, it was then abs absorbed by the larger cell, which was aerobic. And that little cyanobacteria became mitochondria. Okay. This is why your mitochondria are the only cell in your body with two membranes. Everything else has one, and mitochondria has one too, but the original membrane from when it was a cyanobacteria by itself never disappeared. It just got encapsulated by the larger cell. So that's why when I tell people, you know, spirulina contains everything that your body needs, especially for your mitochondria, because they're family. They pretty much came from the same place. Spirulina and your mitochondria are family. This is evolutionarily proven. It's called endosymbiotic theory. It was a theory dis discovered by an MIT professor in the 60s, and it's validated in all the NIH articles. It, it, so just go in there and Google history of mitochondria or evolution of mitochondria, and they all say it came from cyanobacteria like spirulina. So if you wonder why spirulina is the key that unlocks the perfect health, I just told you why. They're, they're basically the same thing, <laughs> or they were. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Catherine Arnston of Energy Bits, thank you so much for being on this episode of the Healthy Heart Show. Dr. Jack Wolfson, signing out. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Jack.